Hi, and welcome to the Ultimate Guide to Azure Container Instances. I call this tutorial Ultimate because I try to include every aspect of your daily cloud development. So together we will register at Azure, we will create all the necessary resources, we will even deploy our application and of course we will do all the maintenance stuff. I even created chapters so you can skip to the relevant parts. So let's start the first chapter with the fundamental questions. Why should I use ACI? I have been working with ACI for over a year now and I can tell you two things. It's simple and it's cheap. It's simple because it doesn't need any Kubernetes know-how. But simplicity comes with a price. You don't have scaling, you don't have redundancy, you cannot do something like a failover cluster. This is not possible with ACI. So ACI is best fitted for small applications, for demonstration purposes, for rapid prototyping. This is the case where ACI really helps you to build an application quickly. So let's start our next chapter by going through the registration and payment process. In order to get started with ACI, you need an Azure subscription. So let's get one at azure.microsoft.com. There is an option to try Azure for free, which we will use. So we click on Start Free. We need to log in with a Microsoft account. If you don't have such a Microsoft account, you can create it. I already have it, so I'd pick it here. Enter my password, stay signed in. And now I have to register myself. The thing is, I need a credit card. But the first month is free and you get something like a $200 budget to play around. After filling in your address, you have to give your credit card data now. I can assure you that this is a safe thing to do and it's a common practice. For example, Google Cloud Service also wants your credit card data. You won't be charged unless you move to pay as go. My credit card data has been validated and I'm ready to go to the Azure portal. Congratulations, you registered yourself to Microsoft Azure. And now you're afraid that they will charge your credit card, which is okay for me because I bought Microsoft stocks in the last 10 years and they really skyrocketed. But if we leave the jokes aside, there's one important limitation. With your free account, you cannot create endless ACI resources. There's a limit of one or two resources. So come on, let's create our Hello World ACI. So here we are at the Quick Start Center. Let's create our Azure container instance. Go to search and type in ACI and you will find container instances. Now you click on create container instances. Now we need to fill in the form. First of all, your subscription is automatically selected. It's simply called Azure subscription one. And now we need a resource group. Let me give you a short explanation of the purpose of a resource group. Usually, you will be working for a company or a department who created an Azure Access and who's paying for it. This is called the tenant and it's the top level in the hierarchy. Usually this tenant maintains a list of all people who have access to the cloud. This is called the Active Directory. Your company will give you access to Azure by creating a subscription for you. Maybe even two subscriptions, one for develop and one for production. And here we are now. The subscription is your playground. In your subscription, you can create multiple resource groups. So each resource group represents a separate project. So each time when, for example, an application service accesses a database, both resources should be in the same resource group. Since we don't have a resource group yet, we will create a new one. I will simply call it my test resource group. Next we need to name our containers. So I will name it my test container instance. The name is validated. It must be unique and has to have a certain name length. Now we need to select the physical data center which hosts our Azure container instances. Since I'm living in Germany, I will select Germany West. Now we select the availability zones. Germany West Central has three different buildings which are physically separated and if we want to, we can put all our resources into one specific zone. This will give us some better latency. Since we are talking about milliseconds, 
We don't care and select none. Next we select the SKU which stands for stock keeping unit. It's simply the option to select a more confidential version of our Azure container instances with memory encryption and hardware level isolation. Um, this is not available for Germany West Central and I think it's really not needed, so we skip that. Next we select the image source. These are the containers which will be running in our ACI environment. Our goal is to use our own containers which are uploaded to the Azure Container Registry. But for now, let's start with the quick start images to see if our containers are running at all. We can select between three quick start images. One simple Hello World container, a simple Linux web server and the big fat Windows web server. So let's use the simple Hello World service just to test our application. Now we need to select the size of our containers. If you click on change size, you can select between 1 and 8 CPU cores and between 1 and 32 gigabytes of memory. The more CPU cores and the more memory, the more expensive. So I would start with a small number like suggested here and you have the possibility to increase these numbers later. So we click on OK and we continue with the networking. Next, we need to select the accessibility of our application. Public is fine, which means it's available to everybody. Private means it's only available via VPN and non means it's not available at all. We want our application to be accessible via an URL. In order to do this, we need to assign a DNS name label, which is some kind of technical name for something we will do later. I will just name it my test DNS label. When we register a domain for our DNS name label, we want to make sure that nobody steals our domain. So there are some limits of reuse which we can select from. Here it's tenant which means that the big organization can reuse the label but nobody outside our organization. So this one is fine. Next we define our open ports. Currently we only have HTTP access, but what I want is HTTPS access. So I add port 443 with protocol TCP and this will allow us HTTP access. So let's move to advanced settings. In the advanced tab we have three options. First of all it's a restart policy. Currently our container will only be restarted if there is an exit code in equal to zero, which means an error occurred. We can change that to always, which means that our container will always be restarting, which is good for a kind of always on application. Next, we can define some environment variables. So we could have a test key with a test value. And we also have the possibility to override the command which is usually in the docker file. So we will leave that for now. So now let's go to tags. Next we can add some tags which is quite valuable if we have a lot of different resources and we want a good billing and we want to build them by tag. We don't need that so we will leave it and go to review and create. You can see that there is a final validation which passed. It means we can create our Azure container instance. After having waited for a minute or two, our deployment is complete. And now we can go to the resource. So first let's check if our application is running at all. You can see that it already has an IP address. So we copy the IP address to the clipboard, open a new tab and paste the IP address. You can see there's a start page. This is it. This is the Hello World application. Our container is already running. Next we will have a look at the statistics. You can see the CPU usage, you can see the memory usage, you can see the received network bytes and the sent network bytes, which gives you a quick overview. Very cool. You can also stop the containers at any time and start them again. Or you can simply restart the services, which means that it stops and starts the services. Refresh simply means reloading the page. Next, we want to have a look at our containers, so we click on containers. We can see that our application has only one container which is running. We can go 
to the logs. To see what's happening in the logs, it simply says listening to on port 80. A very cool feature is the possibility to connect with the container via shell and execute some commands on it. So let's try that out. I click on connect, I use bin bash and click on connect. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. The container doesn't support the bash. But let's try it again. Click on connect and now we use sh to connect and the container supports it. Not every container supports shell accessibility. So now we are connected to the container. We can, for example, run a top command. So we see that there are some processes running in the background. So we created our first Hello World application. But you and I, we know that Hello World applications are totally useless. I assume that you already created your own application and what you want now is to put your application into a container image, upload this container image to a container registry and from this container registry you deploy it to ACI. So let's create an Azure container registry. Go to portal.azure.com. If everything goes right, you see your container instances and your subscription. If you don't see anything, maybe you selected the wrong account and you need to sign in with a different account. So now you click on create a resource, search for container and select container registry. You find the container registry and you click on create container registry. So let's go through the creation dialog. First of all, you select your resource group, which you already created. Then you need a registry name. The registry name must be unique. So there's no chance that somebody else take the same name. I use Discotek, which is available. Next, we choose the location. Since I am living in Germany, I select Germany West Central. If you need redundancy and high availability, you can select an availability zone. I would say that a container registry is not production critical. And moreover, in Germany West Central, we don't have it, so we just skip it. Next option is the SKU, the stock keeping unit. You can select the most cheap, basic. Let's open a comparison table. You can see with basic you only have 10 gigabytes, but it's much cheaper. So we take this one. Next we go to networking. Since we use the cheap basic variant, our container registry is public, which is fine because it's password protected. So we can go to encryption. Encryption saves our images in an encrypted format it's a premium feature, we don't need it, so we go to tags. We also don't need tags, so we go to review and create. Our validation has passed, we can create our container registry. We wait for a minute or two until our deployment is complete and then we go to the resource. Now that we have created our container registry, let's take our applications and dockerize it. Dockerizing means putting our application into a container image with the help of a docker file. The next step is to connect our development computer to the Azure Container Registry. Please note that for this you need a command line tool called AZ. In order to log into Azure Container Registry we need the Azure CLI which we can download here. Install on Windows and we click on the latest release and then we go through the installation. Accept, install and we click on finish. So first you have to log into Azure itself and then you have to log into the Azure Container Registry. So let's do it. I start the PowerShell. I type AZ login. Then I log in with my account. You can see that the login was successful. I even see my subscription here. Now we have to log into Azure Container Registry. In order to do this, first of all, we have to start our Docker desktop. Now our Docker desktop is started and we can return to the shell. So we type az acr login minus minus name discotake, which is the name of our Azure Container Registry. That's it. Our login was successful. And as a kind of warm up, we want to take an existing container and push it to our Container Registry. For this, also make sure that you downloaded and installed Docker Desktop for Windows. So let's push an image to the Azure Container Registry. I go to the Docker Desktop 
and have a look which images are existing. Here I have a secret server from another tutorial which I will simply use for pushing it to our own registry. In order to simplify the tagging I just copy the container ID to the clipboard. Then I go to the shell and type docker tag. Then I paste the ID and I type discotake.azurci.io slash SQL server. After tagging it, I can push it. Docker push discotake.azurecr.io slash SQL server. And now you can see that our image is uploaded. Now the container has been pushed to the registry. Please note that this container is quite big because it's a Windows container. Now we want to make sure that our image has been uploaded. So we go to our discotheque container registry, go to repositories and here we see that a new repository called SQL Server has been added. And here we find our image. Now let's create our own image and push it to Azure Container Registry. It's the image for our application. In another tutorial, I created a small program called Beverage, which I can simply start. It's an application which is running on localhost port 5000. So I open Visual Studio Code and create a new Docker file. New file, Docker file. So let's have a look at our example docker file. It's based on an ASP.NET 7 image. It creates a work dir. It copies the whole build folder into our container and then it starts the beverage demo.dll with the .NET command. Now let's build our application. We use the command docker build. It's important to give the right tag with the name of our Azure container registry the name of our image and dot means it just takes the docker file in the local folder. Now that our image has been built, we can test it locally. We can simply type docker run discotheque.azurecr.io slash beverage container and this will run our application. It's working fine. Now let's push it to our registry. This is also quite simple. We just type in docker push and we take the name of our image and then we push it to our registry. Yeah, we see the beverage container. Now we can continue. We are done with the Azure container registry. So our application has been dockerized, has been pushed to our container registry and is now waiting patiently for the next step, the deployment. One way to deploy is to use docker compose. I would call this way, well, a bit legacy. From November on, it's not being developed any further, but this way is very simple, especially if you already work with Docker Compose. So let's have a look at it. In this part, we will create a Docker Compose file using Visual Studio. So we click on new file, and typically the file is called docker-compose.yml. So let's have a look at the Docker Compose file. The Docker Compose file includes several images and puts them all together to a running application. We have two images. The first image is our beverage container and the second image is our SQL server. So for each image we create a container which is in this case named like the image. Here we have one specific definition, it is the port. When we want to contact our application from outside, we need a port to be responsive. You can see that the application responds on port 80, while the SQL server itself is internally accessible, but it has, doesn't have any open port to the public. So let's try to start this application. We use docker compose up. Docker Compose is installed when you install Docker for Windows. Okay, 
Now you can see that our application failed. The reason is that we need to set a environment variable which accepts the end user license for SQL Server. So let's do it on the fly. In Visual Studio Code, I have some kind of IntelliSense, which is very nice. So I can define an environment. The name is accept EULA and the value is 1 for true. So let's restart it now. So this time when I start the application with Docker Compose up, you can see that the SQL Server is starting. So we get a lot of logs. The application is running and when we press Ctrl and C, the application is stopped. By the way, Docker Desktop has a very nice feature to show the Compose files. So you see a Docker Compose file here which contains two running containers. So everything is automatically grouped, which is quite cool. Now that we made sure that our application is running locally, we can directly push our Docker Compose application to Azure Container Instances. So let's do that. You have to log into Docker. Docker Login Azure. This is a Microsoft specific extension for Docker which is running. You have to select your accounts and now you're logged into Docker. Login succeeded means that Docker is connected to Azure Container Instances. The next thing is quite formal. You have to create a so-called context. You can just type in the commands docker context create ACI and then you can name your context as you wish. This will connect your source group and your subscription to Docker Compose. I can select my resource group and that's all. Once you created this context, you have to use it. For this, we have the command docker context use and then the name of your context. And now you can start your application with the command docker compose up. So what is my computer doing now? My computer is creating two containers on ACI. The problem is that this method is quite slow. And moreover, it binds together two technologies which maybe don't belong together. So it was decided that this technology will be retired, which means that they just stop developing it further. So let's try it one time, but later I will show you a better method to get your images running on ACI. So we are ready. Let's have a look at the ACI website and see if our containers arrived there. So I opened portal.azure.com to check how my application looks. These container instances have been created. I click on them and when I go to containers, I can see that three containers are running. Two of them are the application and the database, but the third one is an helper application from Docker Compose, which we can simply ignore. Now when you click on logs, you can see that for every container, you can see logs. When you go to the SQL Server, you see a strange error and this is because a uh, SQL Server runs out of memory. So we have to fix this. In order to increase memory for our application, we need to go back to the docker compose.yaml file and we need to add some information. The SQL Server now gets a deploy tag, which means that we start with one gigabyte of memory and the limit might be two gigabytes of memory. We can define the same for the CPU. So we start with one CPU and the limit is set to two CPUs. So let's try to deploy again. And now let's have a look if our container is working. So we go back to our container instances, click on containers, and now we go to the SQL Server log. And we can see that now our SQL Server is running fine. I remember how I used this deployment method in a GitHub Action Pipeline and it really took 12 to 15 minutes for each deployment. This really led to problems. But there is one alternative. You can create a JSON or YAML file and in this file you put some declarative deployment procedures and execute them via the AZ command line tool. This can be even put into a GitHub Action Pipeline and then it runs quite fast. The syntax is not that easy, 
but at least much easier than Kubernetes. And I'm here to help you get through the process. So let's start. Okay, so one thing in ACI which is really missing is the possibility to create a container simply by clicking with your mouse. So I would like to go to containers, say add container, and then just type in my data and the container is added. This is not possible. We have to write our deployment script by hand. There's a small hint which will help you. There is an option to create a template from a working application. I can click on export template. And what Azure is doing here is to create this template file. It is parameterized, which makes it hardly readable. We don't need it right now, so we can remove the checkbox for include parameters. This will make our template a bit easier. Okay, so we have to download this template and then we change it. After we have downloaded the zip file, we can open the template.json and it's opening in Visual Studio Code, which is good for us. So let's go through the template. We can see, for example, the name of our application. We can change that. The name should be Azure Deploy Test. Moreover, we don't need the Docker Compose tag. We can remove it. Now you can see that the beverage container is defined, the image is defined, the port is defined. Even the resources are defined. The same is for the SQL Server. The except EULA is defined. Everything is in place. Now we can remove the sidecar. We don't need it. So what I'm basically doing here is to play around with a JSON file and change it to my needs. Okay, now I save this one. The problem of this file is that it uses the JSON syntax which has opening and closing brackets and is not that easy to read. Better to use YAML. On Microsoft you will find a nice example. So here you have a YAML file which you can copy and then you create it as template.yaml and now you paste everything into it and you can just change this example here. So what I do now, I change the images Then I change the name of the containers. I remove port 8080 because we don't need it. I also remove the tags. And I change the name. And I also change the location. It has to be Germany West Central. Now we can already deploy. So the command is az container create, then we name the resource group and we also specify the file. And now we try it and see what happens. You see that we get the same error as before. We changed memory limits, so we have to delete my test ACI. So let's do that. I go to my test ACI and I delete it. Now let's try it again. I still get an error that I exceeded the number of standard cores, although there is a resource limit. The problem is the following. I'm using Azure in a kind of free mode. I don't pay anything, so Microsoft limits the number of cores which I can use. This is in order to prevent fraud. So we stumble into the next error. Our image is inaccessible. The problem is that we need to pass the credentials of the Azure Container Registry to our template file. You need to add image registry credentials to your template. So I copy this code and paste it into my template YAML right below the containers node. So first I need to Put the server here. Our username is discotheque. And where do we get the password from? Let me show it to you. You find it at your Azure portal. Here you go to the container registry and in the container registry you have your access keys. 
Now you have to enable the admin user. This creates the username Discotake and now you can simply copy the password to the clipboard and then you paste it here. Now let's try to deploy again. Now you see that the deployment is running. So we have to wait until it finishes. The deployment has been successful. You can see it because you have a JSON file with all the data of the deployment. That's nice. Now let's check if our container instances are running. We see an error. Something has gone wrong. When I go to the containers, I see that my SQL server is terminating. I'm sure that this has to do with the memory limit. So I go back to my template.yaml and fix that. So just like in the docker compose file, I need to define the requests and the limits to get the memory right. So in order to redeploy, I have to delete my Azure container instances now. And after deleting it, I can redeploy it because I changed the memory limits. After playing around, I found out I forgot to set the environment variables. This is also something which you can set in the template YAML, um, except EULA must be one. So now let's see if our containers are working. So after adding some environment variables, our containers are running. We can check that, we can see that both our containers are running and we can also go to the logs and see that our container has started successfully. Okay, fine. Your application is running. You're starting to save data into your database. Then you restart your application and your data is gone. The problem is that containers are ephemeral. Being ephemeral is generally something good. It means that you can stop and start the container at any time and you always get the initial state. This is very important for scaling. But it also means that in order for files to be persistent, you need to store them in a place different from your container. But in Azure, there's a simple solution. It's called Azure Storage Account and it can be connected to Azure Container Instances. And I show you how you do it. So in order for our database to be persistent, we first need to create a new storage account. So we click on create a resource, we search for storage account, and we create a Microsoft storage account. The storage account is in my subscription, my test subscription. It is in my resource group. And now I need a unique storage account name. Then we have to reselect the region, which is Germany West Central, which is fine. There are standard and premium performance version. We take the cheapest one. And also for redundancy, we can take the locally redundant storage, which is the lowest cost option. So we go to advanced. We can leave it as it is, go to networking, which is also fine. We can leave data protection as it is. Encryption and text, we can all leave it as it is. After the successful final validation, we can create our resource. Our deployment is complete. So next, we will adapt the template.yaml to do the file mounting. There are two places in the template.yaml where we need to change something. First, we need to define our volume. Let's call it file share volume and the share name is ACI share. Later, we will also find out the storage account name and the storage account key. We find this data at Azure. After our deployment is complete, we can go to the resource and then we can go to file shares and then we add a new file share. So our name must be ACI share because we just defined it and then we create our file share. Now we need the access keys. We click on access keys. So our storage account name is Discotake and we need some kind of key here. So we show the key, we copy it to the clipboard and now we go back to our template YAML. So the storage account key is here and the storage account name is Discotake. Now there's one thing left to do. We need to tell our SQL Server container that it should use the file share instead of the container. 
So by adding this directive here, we take the folder here, which is usually the folder where the data is stored. And instead of taking the local folder, which will be deleted after restarting the container, we use the file share volume. So this is something we can deploy now and test if it works. So you can see that the deployment was successful, but is SQL Server really using our data folder? Let's check that and I'll show you how. On Microsoft Azure, you can go to the storage account, which we just created, and then you can go to file shares. And now you see the share which we just created. And here you have a nice option to browse the directory. So you click on browse. And you can see that all the databases have been created inside our shared folder, which means that after restarting our database, the data is still existing. To be honest, this is not the complete solution. I ignored the secrets and the logs, but this is just to show you how file shares work. Now it's time to present your application to your boss. But there's a small problem left. You cannot simply pass the IP address to your boss because the IP address will change often. But there's a solution. We will create a so-called DNS label and with the help of this DNS label, our application will receive a URL and this URL will be permanent. Job done. In order to access our application, we by default use an IP address. This IP address, which we can copy to the clipboard and then just paste it. Currently it gives a 404, but this is okay. The problem is that this IP changes often. So what we would like to have is a full qualified domain name. In this example, I configured Discotheque and this one is automatically generated by Azure Container Instances. This is okay, since we usually use ACI for development and testing purposes and not for production deployment. In order to use this DNS label, we need to take the template YAML and add a DNS name label just at the place where the IP address is located. I named my DNS name Discotheque. Then I have to redeploy my application. This redeployment will take a long time since um, the domain name has to be registered. But after we have done this, we can access our application in the following way. So in order to access our application by FQDN, we copy the URL, we paste it, then we add API slash beverage and our application is using the URL. Currently we get an error 500, so what we are doing is we go to the container logs and in the container logs we can see that there's an error with an SQL server. The problem is that the database connection doesn't work, but this is not our problem for now. We want to work with ACI. Thanks for watching my tutorial. I hope you liked it and I hope you found it useful. It took me two days to create all this tutorial stuff. So if you like it, please press the like button so I don't feel like I wasted two days of my time. Maybe I did. I don't know. Time will tell.